Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. You might have a blouse in your closet that you wish you had it in another color or the blouse is wearing out and you're a little sad by it and you wish you could find another one just like it. So I'm going to show you how you can take a blouse with a dolman sleeve, not with a set in a sleeve, and I'll show you the difference in a moment. And to duplicate it, draw your own pattern. So let's get started. This blouse here and this blouse were all made from the same pattern. So this was the first one I made. This one is very, very similar to the one I duplicated, just with a little bit of a slight change on it. And this blue one over here, I changed it to where there's no lace and it has a V-neck. So I'll also give you some tips on how to change the neckline. This blouse was purchased years ago and I just love wearing it because it's very, very comfortable. One of the things that I didn't like about the blouse is the neckline came very low in the, the back of my neck and I wished it was a little higher. It was also a little wider out here and it has the dolman sleeves. That means there's no seam here. If you're going to pick a blouse out of your closet that has a seam in here, this tutorial will not cover that on how to recreate that sleeve. So it has a dolman sleeve. At the very bottom of the shirt is a, a strip of lace. So you could put lace on it like I had in the first um, blouse that I showed you, or you can leave that out. So let's get started. To create the pattern, you need to have something to draw on. You can use old wrapping paper or packing paper. I don't recommend tissue paper because it tears so easily. This particular roll of paper I purchased at Walmart and it's called craft paper and you can use it for wrapping packages to be shipped off. It's two and a half feet wide by 30 feet long and you get quite a bit of paper. Lay your blouse down on a table and have the back of your blouse facing up and make sure it's all smoothed out. Now over here I have the lace. Well, I'm not going to be putting lace on the blouse I'm making. So I'm going to fold it back and you will see a surged edge here. So I'm going to fold it all completely back. Now bring your two side seams together. So I'm going to fold it up like this. And again, you want to make sure it's very, very smooth. Everything is even. The neckline, the shoulders, all of it. And take your time with this. All right, so now I've got this fold over here. I'm going to undo this bow because it's kind of in my way. Get this up here. So now I'm going to take this folded edge and bring it along this edge of my paper. Bring it up here and again take your time lining it up. Now I like using these heavy weights to hold my fabric down so that it doesn't move. So I'm going to take these weights that I have and just lay them on top and place one here over here. I'm going to place this one right here and this one here. You'll notice here's the front neckline and here's the back neckline. I want to get this out of the way so I'm just going to tuck it under a little bit as best as I can and then I'm going to go ahead and place my weights down to hold it all in place. Now you want to trace around it and just follow the outline of your shirt. Don't worry about everything, your lines perfect. Remember you have a pencil and you can always erase and fix if you need to. So I prefer to use a pencil on the first round. And then you're going to come up here to the shoulder and draw along here. And then when you come to this neckline, 
just kind of slowly go around it, trying to duplicate it a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I am going to be changing my neckline. So I went ahead and uh, highlighted my pencil line with a red marker so you could see it better on camera. So now I'm taking a little marking um, or a little seam gauge and I want to put these little dash lines. This is representing the seam allowance. So I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance and I'm just going to keep doing little marks all the way around. Just keep making marks and keep going all the way around. Now up here at the neckline I went ahead and drew marks here. So in case you are doing this type of neckline then go ahead and make sure you add seam allowance. And then you're going to cut this pattern out and you're going to cut on the dash lines right here. So go ahead and cut your pattern all the way out. Now before you cut it out, if you want to make any changes, you want to make it wider, make it longer, of course, you want to do that before you cut it out. So remember, I want to change my neckline. So I'm going to, I've already got my little dash lines here for seam allowance. I'm going to leave that there because I want to make a V neck. So I'm going to go down right about to here to make a v-neck. So I'm going to take a ruler, place it on the edge of my seam markings, and then line it up with the marking down here. And then I'm just going to draw a straight line. So when I go to cut my pattern out, I'm going to cut right on this line. Now you need to draw the pattern for the back of the blouse. So now have the front of your blouse facing up. You're going to fold it in half just like you did before. Nothing changes on this. Make sure everything is lined up here at the shoulder area because you don't want your neckline to be off center. So then bring it up to the fold and go ahead and place your weights on it. Now you can get these weights at a hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot and you just go to the section of the store where they have all the nuts and bolts. Okay, now you're going to trace around it just like you did before. So you trace around that line and then come around here. Now I'm also going to raise this neckline up over here. So you would do that just like you did in the other pattern. You, instead of drawing all the way down here, I want to come up a little bit higher. So I'm actually going to increase it by about an inch and a half. Once you do that, remove the blouse, draw your, five, your half inch seam allowance lines all the way around, and then cut it out. I like to keep my patterns after I've drawn them, so I want to make sure I write notes on it so I won't forget what each side of this pattern is. So you want to, on your pattern for the front of the blouse, write front. That's really important. And then you want to put center front over here and a little note, it's to be placed on the fold of your fabric. And then I wrote side here and then shoulder up here. And make sure you write the same notes on your other pattern. This is the back, right back on there. Make sure you mark that this center seam right here goes on the fold of your fabric. You need to draw two more pattern pieces for your neckline, so for the front and back necklines. This helps to make your neckline lay down nice and flat. So here's my front pattern piece. Here's the center seam, I mean, excuse me, the center fold line, and then this is the V-neck right here. I've taken some scrap paper and placed it underneath. And all I'm going to do is trace around this neckline. So I'm going to go down here uh, about two and a half inches, three inches or so and draw up to that corner. Then I'm going to trace all the way up to the shoulder 
and then about two and a half inches across the shoulder. So remove your pattern piece and then connect the two, the line up here at the top and the bottom. And I just sort of drew a curved line. You would repeat that process for the facing for your back section. So here's my scrap paper. Here's the neckline. So draw a little bit this way across the neckline and across the top. And then just sort of draw a little curved line that goes here like that. So here's my two pattern pieces. Make sure you mark them just like you did your larger pattern pieces. I'm going to make one little cut on this piece of facing because there's going to be all this excess fabric on your blouse. You really don't need it. So I've drawn a line. I've gone down about two inches from the bottom of the V-neck and I'm, I drew a line and then I'm just going to cut it off. So my facing now looks like this. Now you're going to fold your fabric so that you can place your patterns on it. So normally when I'm cutting something out, I have my selvage edges together. Well, because the fabric I used is so wide, I, want, I don't want to cut into all this unnecessarily because I could make a scarf for the neck. So, but, so if you want to make a scarf out of your extra fabric, fold it back just a little bit more than normal. Then place your fabric, your pattern pieces on the fold line. Here's my V-neck. I'm sorry, I'm not the greatest drawer in the world. That's why my shirt looks a little funky. Again, I use weights to hold mine down. If you don't have weights, then go ahead and use straight pins and then go ahead and cut around the edges of both pattern pieces. After you've cut your two larger pieces out, you're going to have some fabric in here that you can use to cut your facing out. So you can take that fabric and fold it because you want to be able to place those uh, facing pieces on your fold line. So go ahead and place them on the fabric, pin them down, and then go ahead and cut them out. I'm going to use a serger to stitch my blouse together. There is one section that I will also be using a straight stitch on my sewing machine. If you do not have a serger, it's not a problem. You can still make this blouse. And so if I come to a section that's a little confusing to you, I'm going to talk about overcasting stitches. And on all computerized sewing machines are overcasting stitches. So now on this blouse, I'm going to stitch on the end of the sleeves, and you're going to do this on both pieces. So go to the end of both sleeves and serge it. And then go along the bottom edge and serge it also. And you're doing it on both your front piece and your back piece. On my facing, normally I would stitch my facing together, but because I want to serge the edges, it's a lot easier to serge the outer edges if the two pieces are not stitched together. We'll stitch them together later. So go ahead and on your neck pieces, serge the outer edge of them on both pieces. Now on these, if you don't have a serger, you can use your overcast stitch on the outer edge. Now go ahead and put your facing on your neckline. So I've got my uh, front section here and I've already pinned it down. And then you're going to use your sewing machine on this part because it's a lot easier using the sewing machine on the neckline. So you're gonna pin it together and stitch a half inch seam. You're going to change the stitch length to 3.0. Now if you're using a really heavy fabric, you don't need to change your stitch length. But because this is a chiffon, if your stitch is too tight and you need to rip it out, it's going to be impossible to do that. So if you're using a really thin fabric, change that stitch length. 
another tip I have for you on this because even though you change the stitch length it still kind of gathers and puckers up a little bit. So place thin paper, I got this at Home Depot in the paint department, underneath and then do your stitching and then you just tear it off when you're done. It's going to look so much nicer if you do this. So you're going to stitch half inch seam and when you get down here to the lower part of the V, you're going to stop your needle, keep your needle down right in alignment with this little pointed area here. Leave your needle down, lift your presser foot and turn your fabric and then continue stitching right along here. Now place the facing on the back section of your pattern piece. And remember, in case I didn't mention in the previous section, you want to bring the front sides of your fabric pieces together. So you want to make sure the front side of your fabric is facing up and then place your facing piece face down. That would be the pretty side of the fabric. Go ahead and pin it, line the edge of your facing up here at the shoulders, and then stitch a one half inch seam right along there. If you're doing a v-neck like I am, you need to do a cut from the outer edge close into that point right there. You don't want to go through your stitch line, so don't get so close it'll come apart. So go ahead and just do a little clip in there, a little bit more. If you don't do this, your neckline will not lay down properly in that V. Now, before I continued on, I went to my serger and I surged the raw edges of the V neckline. Now, you want to make sure when you're surging, you're going to start up here at the top and go down here. Once you get down to here, you want to pull this part out of the way so that you don't stitch over this in the wrong manner. Then you're going to go up and I flip it over. So let me flip this over and then put it in your machine. Start up here, surge all the way down as you get closer to that V, pull this out of the way. We just have one more step to finish off the facing. You want to do this step at your ironing board and you're going to pull the facing out. So here's the front part of the blouse and here's the facing. I pulled the seam towards the facing and then you're going to press all along here and you do it on the other side of the neckline too. Then I still kept my stitch at 3.0. Here's the actual seam you're going to come in about an eighth of an inch and you're going to stitch this seam area here to the facing. And this is going to help the facing lay down really nice. So go ahead and stitch along here all the way up to where that V is. So here it is. Here's where the V star is right here. You want to stop and then back stitch a little bit. Then you're going to go to the other side, start up at the top because it'll be a lot easier. Again, you're going to stitch on this side, on the facing, stitch an eighth of an inch away and go all the way down to where the V is and then stop and back stitch. You're going to repeat that process for the facing on the back of the blouse. So here again, I, this is my facing piece. Here is the seam. Press it towards your facing piece. Then come in an eighth of an inch away from where this original seam is and stitch all along till you get to the end. Now take your facing, and this is the front side of the fabric. Take it and fold it underneath and straighten it out really nice and then go ahead and press these edges flat and do the same thing on the back neckline. Now the next step is to stitch your shoulder seams together. So you want to bring the front sides of your fabric together, 
both the front and back sections. Pin it up here at the top edge. Now over here where the facing is, I'm pulling the facing out. So I've taken it out from underneath like I had and pulled it straight out. And then you're going to go to your serger and then serge this edge all the way out to the end of the facing. If you do not have a serger, then go ahead and do a half inch seam using your straight stitch. Lengthen that stitch. Use the paper if you're having problems with your fabric puckering. And then of course you would do one of your overcast stitches on the raw edge of your fabric. Now bring front sides together and stitch your side seams. So go ahead and bring those raw edges together, pin, and either serge it with your serger or do a half inch wide uh, straight stitch using a 3.0 length. And then you would go ahead and do your overcast stitch on the raw edges. Now go to your ironing board and you're going to begin folding the end of the sleeves and the bottom of the blouse to be hemmed. If you're using a serger, you just need to fold it over one time, about a half inch. If you want it not that big, you can do a quarter inch. If you are using a straight stitch and you're not using a serger, then you need to fold it twice. So fold it over once, quarter of an inch in press, fold it over twice, a quarter of an inch and press. So you do it this way if you do not have a serger. Then after you're done with all your pressing, you're going to stitch it down. So if you're using a serged edge, I would do my straight stitch right over about the middle of the serged area. If you're using, if you have a regular sewing machine, remember you folded it twice you would stitch along the inside edge here. It's really important that if your fabric has been puckering as you stitch, especially on this hem, that you place that thin paper under it and it will lay a lot flatter. This fabric is very sheer and after I got it all done, I was looking at it and I didn't like how the facing was showing through this really sheer fabric. So what I did was I just trimmed the facing down to where it's much shorter and then stitched it down on the top side about three eighths of an inch from the edge and I did that all the way around. Now on the darker fabric where I created this same blouse, it wasn't a problem. It didn't show through at all. So to show you what you can do if your fabric uh, is sheer, you can trim that facing much, much shorter. Now, if you're interested in other clothing projects, I have many. Check below your YouTube screen for those video links. So you want to just scroll down to the description section, click on show more or the down arrow, and it will expand open and you'll see all of the links. Now, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.